What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. I don't know if I ever told you all, but I am incredibly lucky to be in a space where it's pretty much summer all the time. I mean, take a look at this guys. I mean, look how gorgeous this is. So as you all can see, I'm in a very beautiful park. Um, it's one of the benefits of being in Florida. More importantly, that is not why we're here in this video. This video today is going to be focused around managing and monitoring Linux processes. So let me take a second and let you guys know that before we start any video, I always say this, go ahead and check out the description. Make sure you guys are updated on everything that's going on with the channel because I keep everything updated in the description. So in this particular video, of course, we're going to be learning on ideas and concepts that we've learned from in the past. So if this is your first time coming to the channel, go ahead and check out the description. And also specifically what I'm referring to is the Linux playlist that's there. Get caught up with all the videos that we have there. And then when you are all caught up, you can come back to this video and learn from there. So now that you guys are all caught up with the channel and you've seen everything in the description, there's one more thing that I need from you all before we go ahead and move on with today's video. And that's to go ahead and give me a like for the channel as it helps the channel grow. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and also turn on your notifications so that way you're notified whenever we upload new videos to the channel. And lastly, of course, share this video with a family member or friend. Now onto today's topic, we're gonna be talking about managing Linux processes and not only managing it but monitoring it as well those two work hand in hand whenever you are working with the operating system and not just Linux in general when you're working with Windows it's the same concept too the idea is is that you want more resources going to the things that actually do the work than it is to run the operating system and everything else that goes along with it now, since this is going to be a little bit more of an in-depth video, we decided to break it up into four parts. So welcome guys to the third video in our journey when we're learning about processes, specifically how to manage them and how to monitor them. And if you guys haven't checked out the first two videos, go ahead and check those out. I'll put links in the description and possibly somewhere up on the screen as well. But in today's video, you're going to learn all about reviewing the kill command. This is a very important command. And funny enough, people think actually that the kill command is for one purpose and one purpose only. And it sort of is, but there's a lot more to it than that. And what I'm referring to is the signals. What kind of signals can you send with the kill command? And we're gonna briefly talk about that. I'm gonna show you guys an example of how do you look at the signals, especially from a man page perspective and how do we apply it to a real world example of how we see a process actually terminated or paused using our signals. So pay close attention because a lot of people only memorize stuff and they don't know how to leverage the skill sets in order to see what other options are available instead of using just one particular option. And just to give you some insights, I constantly see all the time that people just use the kill-9 command and they don't even know that there's a lot of other signals that you can send. So I'm gonna show you some of those other ones. So stay tuned as we take a look at that. So with housekeeping out of the way, guys, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. I'll see you guys on the other side. Welcome back everyone and welcome back to the desktop. And by now, this environment should be very familiar to you. If you don't know how to bring up a terminal or you're unfamiliar of what this environment is, make sure you check out the description in the video as it always has the latest and greatest information. Plus, what we also do is we put a link to our Linux playlist on there. So that way you can go check on some other videos and get all caught up. And I say this in every video, our videos build on top of each other. So if this is the first time coming here, check out again some of those other videos because we will be building on ideas and concepts that we've learned in the past. So it can be very easy to get lost. And of course, I don't want you to be lost. So with housekeeping out of the way, let's jump into today's topic. Now let's move on to the next section and talk about how do we control processes. This is an interesting topic because when we talk about controlling processes, 
we're going to learn an essential command in order to control, and that command is called the kill command. Let's take a look at what it does. So if we go into the man page for kill, we can see here that it terminates a process, yes, but there's multiple ways in which you can terminate that process and people don't actually know that. So let's dive a little bit into what this kill command can do. So the first thing that I wanna show you is the kill dash L. And what is the dash L? Well, if we take a look here, dash L list is what that stands for. It prints a list of the signal names. So let's go ahead and do quit. Let's do kill dash L. And this actually shows you a list of all the signals that are available in which you can terminate a particular process. Now you may be asking, well, what the heck does that even mean? Well, I'll show you one example. I mean, there's a ton of them here, as you can see, there's about 60, what, 64? I'm not gonna go through all 64 because that will be a very long video. You guys will fall asleep on me and clearly we're not gonna do that. So we'll go over a simple example so that way you can see how some of this works and then it'll be your job to apply to some of the other signals that you can send to a process. So first things first, let's go back to the man page for kill. In order to run the command, you can do kill dash S and then you give it the signal. And then often what I see is it's followed by the process ID number. So if we go down here a little bit, one of the other things that I wanna show you guys, and this is actually very important, the section that says see also, you guys saw a list of those signals, right? There were 64 of them. But what do those actual signals mean? Well, in the see also section, you have what's called the signal man page. Now, this is also something very interesting because I didn't know this after some time of using Linux and I'm pointing this out because it may not be apparent. So what I'm talking about is when you go access this man page for signal now, the seven actually means something. So let's go ahead and do a file and let's open up a new window. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So just to show you guys what the difference is between if I were to do a man signal, this is the man page for ANSIC signal handling. But interestingly enough, this is not the signal page that I need. The signal page over here says, take a look at seven. And funny enough, actually, if you look in the see also section, signal seven is here too. So meaning that we actually went into the wrong man page. So let's go ahead and quit out of this. So in order to access this particular man page that it's talking about, you do a man seven, which is what it's actually referring to by that seven, and then you do signal. So let's go ahead and bring this up. And you can see that it says overview of signals. Very different than the previous man page. Whenever you see a number that is specific on those man pages, you wanna make sure that you do man, followed by that particular number, and followed by the actual page so you can get to the right page. And by the way, I can't even tell you how many years it took me to figure that one out. So if we go over to the signal overview page, and if we go down here and you read about what these signals mean, we get to this section here that basically says signal, the value number that you use, the action, and the comment. And one of the ones that we often use and people don't know it is sig term. So for this particular example, I'm gonna go over some of the popular signals that you'll see. And I think I'm gonna just touch on four of them as there's a lot of them here, but I want you guys to see what these actual signals mean and what they can actually do. So the first one that I'll talk about is the default signal. And this is the one that we use whenever we wanna terminate a process, but we do it in a nice way. And what does that mean? Well, this is a clean way to ask a process to stop running. And that is sig term 15. So when I say sig term 15, sig term is the signal, 15 is the value, and it's a termination signal. Now that termination signal, again, is a nice way. It's like politely asking the process, hey, can you please stop? We no longer need you running. 
Now keep in mind, a process can say, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that, uh, I wanna continue. So another way that we can kill a process, and with this one, it really kills a process no matter what the heck it has going on. And sometimes we call that unblockable, and that one is nine. So you'll see sig kill for the signal, the value of nine, and it is a kill signal. Now I'm gonna talk about two more because I wanna show you guys an example of how these signals work. And the next one that I'll talk about is sig stop. And sig stop, especially in this distro, has a value of 19. So we're interested in 19 and that basically stops the process from running. And then the other signal that I'll talk about is called the sig continue or the sig cont. And in this particular distro, that has a value of 18, which is this over here. And that basically stands for continue if the process is stopped. Now you have all of these definitions and all these definitions uh, sound good, but let's go ahead and practice together so that way we can see what these actual signals mean. So in order to see what we're doing, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this guy up. Let's go back to the top, so that way we can keep the synopsis up. Let's shrink this a little bit. Let's go ahead and open up another window here. Let's make this a little bigger. Okay, so in order to work with this example, let's go ahead and find out what our process ID is for this GVIM. So I already showed you guys what that looks like. So let's do a PS AUX, pipe that into a grep and let's search for GVIM. And we can see we have a process ID of 40201. So now let's practice sending signals over to this process and see what it does. You do a kill and let's do a dash 15. And of course, 15 says that, hey, uh, terminate nicely, meaning, hey, I want you to close the process and do it in a clean way. And let's give it the process ID of 40201. And as you can see, GVIM was killed. So if I were to do a PS AUX again, and we were to search for GVIM, of course, GVIM process ID 40201 is no longer running. So let's launch GVIM again. Let's take a look at what the process ID is for GVIM. So if we were to do a PS space AUX and pipe that into a grep and search for GVIM, we can see here that GVIM is 40683. That is its process ID. So Let's do a kill dash nine. And remember dash nine means sig kill. That is a signal that says, hey, I don't care if it's clean or not. You're gonna go ahead and terminate immediately. After that, we give it the process ID, which is 40683. And as you can see, GVIM is no longer running. And we see that because the process ID of 40683 no longer exists. So remember the two differences between the dash 15 and the dash nine. Dash 15 is a clean way. It's asking the process to terminate. And dash nine is a not so clean way. It immediately terminates that process and it doesn't matter what's currently happening on the machine. Now let's take a look at two other ones, which I think is very, very interesting. and It'll showcase what these signals do and you can go ahead and use this man page here in order to practice with some of the other signals. But let's go over sig stop and sig continue. So if I have GVIM up and running again, so with GVIM up and running now, let's go ahead and take a look at the process ID. So GVIM has a process ID now of 40733. Now let's say I am working with GVIM. As you can see, I'm in insert mode. So let's say hello. Now, actually, before we continue writing, let's go ahead and exit and go into regular mode. Let's change the color on here, color scheme. Maybe that's a little bit better on the eyes, I think. So with the color changed, let's go ahead and go back here and let's continue typing, subscribe. 
to Acosta ETF. All right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that in insert mode for now. And let's go ahead and do a kill dash 19 in order to stop this process from running. And you'll actually see what happens, which I think is very interesting. Let's go ahead and do process 40733. And interestingly enough, the process looks like it's still running, right? Let's bring this up a little bit here so my face doesn't block it. But technically, if I go back to the process now in GVIM, the process looks like it's running. So I'm in insert mode, so I should be able to type, right? And let's just say space, hello, how are you, question mark. And interestingly enough, looks like nothing is happening here. Why? Because the process has stopped. So now let's go back here and do a kill dash 18. And remember, we talked about it over here. 18 is a sig cont or sig continue, as I like to call it, and it continues the process if stopped. Now you may be asking, well, why not 19? Well, as you can tell, 19 is being used by sig stop. So it wouldn't be 19, but that's just process of elimination. And also as well, a little bit of memorization for my part. I know that in this distro, 19 is to stop and 18 is to continue. So make sure you keep track of that for your particular distro. So if I were to go back now and do 18 for 40733, let's continue the process and see what happens. Interesting, look at that. It automatically put in, hello, how are you? Because there was text that was put into a buffer. And as soon as the process started again, the buffer dumped that text into the process. So now you can see the hello, how are you? But if I go back here now and hit enter, subscribe for more content. And I need to do a better job of typing here. Missed the C there. But see how I was able to go back in now and start typing again because the process actually started over again. And it's directly taking content from the buffer and putting it into the process. Whereas before I stopped it and all I was doing was filling up that buffer and it was waiting for the process to start again and then dump it. So that was a really cool example of how you were able to see what different signals do. They don't all do the same thing. And giving that value will help you choose what the signal that you're sending to a process. Very, very cool example. All right, everyone. So now it's going to be up to you to go through this particular man page and go and read what those values are. Go read what the signals are. What do they do? Play around with it and see what you get. And then let me know in the comments if you found anything interesting. So welcome back, everyone. Great to see you back. And by the way, I'm pretty sure you all learned a lot when it comes to managing and monitoring Linux processes. Now, in every video I say this, if you didn't understand it, go ahead and rewatch the video again. Practice makes perfect. Remember, I didn't know this when I first started and some of it was very, very confusing. So hopefully you guys rewatch the video if something wasn't clear. Also, leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know if something wasn't unclear or if you guys love the video. I mean, again, I feed off of your energy. And if I'm doing an awesome job, guys, let me know in the comments below. Now stay tuned to the channel as we're gonna upload more videos on engineering, tech, and finances. But more importantly, before you guys head out, I need you to do me a favor and go ahead and give me a like for the video as it helps the channel grow. Make sure you guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Also, make sure you ring the bell so that way you're notified whenever we upload new videos to the channel. Lastly, if my videos are helping you out and you really enjoy the content that I'm producing, make sure you go ahead and share it with a family member or friend so that way they can get into their tech journey or they can probably learn a thing or two about money. So I'm gonna continue working out here, guys, as far as going for my daily walk and run and enjoy this beautiful scenery that you see behind me. And you guys stay tuned to the channel. Go ahead and practice as well what you learned today. But most importantly, I will see you all 
in the next video.